today. Always something to do here, man. It's Sunday. It's Sunday. I worked hard yesterday. Had to come back in here today. Squeeze in some more hair cuts in between my friends. Man, I gotta come in here and clean it up. just because it's a, the environment is relaxed it's just that I don't know how to explain it I really don't know how to explain it it's just when I get up in the morning I look forward to my day because I know I'm going to see all these different people I'm gonna hear all these different stories. And every day is, is always something different. It's not like I'm sitting in a bank, pushing the same papers, the same kind of files and all that kind of stuff every day. Every day in a barbershop, something's different. You know, it's, it's, it's funny because I don't, myself personally, I didn't grow up thinking that one day I'm gonna be a barber. And in, in fact, I don't know many barbers who grew up thinking that one day they're gonna be a barber. But the barbers I know, the barbers that got into this trade and took this trade seriously and, and respected this trade, stayed in it. They stayed in it. And all of them feel pretty much the same. It's afforded me a lot of opportunities, a lot of freedoms, because I can make my own schedule, but don't get me wrong. I work for myself in the sense that nobody is employing me, but I don't work for myself in the sense that I have to be here for my customers. I work for all my customers. Those are my bosses. So I have, instead of one boss, I have many bosses. Because it's my responsibility to be here. Whew. My schedule has allowed me to do things that a lot of people with regular jobs couldn't do. And I raised three kids. And I was able to make every baseball game, every football game, every cheerleading, you know, in every game with my daughters were cheerleading, every cheerleading competition, I was able to make every ceremony, every graduation ceremony, award ceremony. I was able to make all those things. And for my kids, that was important, you know, to have a parent there. And I couldn't have done this. I stopped barbering for three years. I had opened my first shop 
and I lost my shop. I lost that shop. That shop didn't make it because I went into it, you know, with, with no experience on actually owning them owning your own business. I managed, I had managed shops prior to that, but that was the first one I owned and I made a lot of mistakes. And when I lost that, it was hard for me to think about starting all over again, going back to work for somebody. I did that. I did go back and work for somebody, but he ended up losing that shop and I was all the way back, square one. So I stopped barbering for a minute. I kind of gave up on it, got tired of it. And I went to work for a company and for three years. You wanna pause it? Mm -hmm. right. And those were <laughs> three of the most miserable years of my life. <laughs> Beating that clock, getting that work done when he wanted it done, not seeing the people, not hearing the stories. I felt like I was so out of touch with, with, with my community because that's another thing Barbara does, keeps you in touch with your community. But I felt like I was so out of touch with my community and I missed it. And because of that, it renewed my energy to go back and do this again. And I did it. And since then, I haven't looked back. And I can truly say that I think that I've been as happy as I can be. Because once again, when I get up and I come in here, I don't feel like I'm coming to work. All the people you meet, man, you meet so many different people. You have so many different resources. You have access to so many different resources because you meet people from all walks of life. You meet the guy that doesn't have a job that's always walking around the corner. You, you, you meet him, he comes to get a haircut. Then you meet that, that bank executive that has all this knowledge and resources. You meet a wide array of different people. I had one customer. He worked, he's from here in the United States. His job sent him to China, so he was living in China. This guy would come back maybe every three months and he would come into the shop and get a haircut. You just wouldn't think that you would meet those people, those type of people, if you didn't know what barbering was about. So that's one thing that I love about it. The other thing I love about it is the barbers, the barbers you meet, they come from a wider, a wide array of uh, places just like your customers. I've been doing this now over 20 years and I think in the course of those 20 years I probably met Will come across maybe 50, 100 barbers. I've trained a lot of barbers right here in my neighborhood. They're challenging in the sense that a lot of the barbers were like me. They didn't grow up thinking about being a barber. A lot of the barbers fell into barber. They couldn't find that job that they fit into. So like me, they were good at this. So they came in and, and they gave it a shot. But the one thing that I tell all barbers is that don't think that you're gonna walk in here and people are gonna jump in your chair. You gotta be committed to build it. Once you build it, it's there for you. Is there for you to lose. And that is one of the challenges when it comes to hiring barbers and finding barbers that actually come work in your shop. Because a lot of them take that for granted. A lot of them take that for granted. 
than those that, then there are those who've been doing it for just as long as me, but don't understand the fact that they've been doing something wrong because they're still, after 20 years, renting chairs. Normally when I look at, when I come across barbers like that, I kind of try to, it makes me think about their past and what have they been doing. And some of their stories, whew, some of their stories are, are, are real interesting. I've had all types of barbers. I've had barbers that come in with nothing, commit, and I've watched their lives improve, watched them buy cars, watched them buy homes. Then I've had that barber that's come in with 20 years of experience, been cutting, and I watched them fumble continuously the entire time you're here. It makes you wonder what's going on. Well, there's one barber in particular that stands out. I, 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 I like this guy. And we had our differences and our struggles and, you know, I pulled and he pushed and he pulled. And I couldn't figure out what was going on. So I sat down with him on a couple of different occasions. And I tried to get inside his life. And boy, <laughs> when I got inside his life, I did not know what I was asking for. His name is James Hale. This the man exactly. said he could do 10 100. hands an hour. I do 10 hands an hour. He did 120. He wouldn't know, he wouldn't know hell from 4th and Market, from Pop Pop's Barbershop, know that I could do 10 heads in an hour. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We, got, so we got some other barbers out here let too. Me finish, let me finish. We got Dave Treadway that can do it. We got Tone Gordon that can do it. And we got Tom Jackson that can let, do let it. Let me finish. I'm let, not the only one that let can let do it. Let me finish. Why are you talking over me? I'm not over? saying I'm the only one. Why are you talking over me? Let nah, me finish. I'm going to answer your question. No, wait a minute. Yes, you're, I can do 10 your, minutes your, your, your proof just answered the question. No, you she, just, she has, you just she called her. You called your proof on the phone. So you asked her two questions. How many can you do an hour? She said four. But you got You said how many did she do? Did you, how many did you do that day? You said 120. She exactly. said 30, 40. Right, but she, so she said 20, 30. She said 20, 30. What'd she say? Right. 20, 30. Which, was, what, but you gotta remember, she was only up there a half a day. With, what's it? What's it? You said he, you, you just sat in the back yeah. there all day with you. Hold up. Check off as you done it. Hold up. What's his name? Jimmy Sprinkle. <laughs> Why are you well, calling you know Jimmy Sprinkle? All you got to do is Hold put up. your no money up. Hold up. If anybody want to see this it done, to just come down no here in the Prime Styles and put your said. money up and watch me do it. Whatever, whatever he bring out, whatever he bring, whatever he tell you, whatever he do, he, put, he add a little to it. He going to add to it. <laughs> Jimmy Sprinkles. This is Jimmy Sprinkles. All right. Welcome back, Jimmy. This is, Welcome this back. This Welcome back, man. We, we, miss don't, we don't make the story. We make the lie better. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, man. Yo, look. I know what I I'm can gonna do. I'm going to tell you this, man. I know what I can do. Yo, I'm going to tell you this. That bet is on. And yeah. we're going to bet the money. I can guarantee you I can do 10 heads in that hour. They act like it's something new. We used right. to do that every day. All right, hold you on. You got to go back to Pop Pop's Barbershop. We're the main. So look, all I'm going to say, man, is, is, is welcome back. That's all, that's all I'm going to say. Welcome back to the shop, man. This was a good day around the shop. This was his, Hale's, first day back. He had been gone for a while. And a lot of the other barbers have been lobbying for him to come back to the shop. But I had my reservations, so it wasn't an easy decision. But this right here, this is hell. This represents hell at his best. The energy that he can bring when he comes in, when he's himself. Well, what I think is himself. He's got that kind of energy and that kind of charisma that that sort of livens, livens up the whole shop. And it's like infectious. People have fun. 
but it wasn't easy getting them back just like it wasn't easy letting him go the first time around and we stayed in touch while he was gone and we talked here and there and we came to this decision eventually that we would give him a we would give him a second try you see I told him while he was out during the times we were talking that it wasn't just solely up to me whether he came back that it was up to him he would be the one that had to make the changes and do the things that was necessary in order for him to fit in and be a part of the shop I also told him not to come ask me to come back until he talked it over with himself and that he was sure that he was ready to come back. He had some things, some issues that were going on. He probably been dealing with them for his whole life. And just coming back, just letting him come back without addressing those things, without him addressing those things, would have been more like spinning our wheels. Oh, yo, what they, what they want to do? They want to fuck with some commas? Oh, they want commas? Do they want commas? Do niggas know what commas is? This is hell. This is my domain. Winder Road. Been here 35 years, niggas. This is my strip right here. Niggas can't fuck with this. It's mine. Now come on into my domain and see where I chill. Now you said something to me when we sat outside the night. The night I came back over after you and you was getting ready to fight. Well, man, you know what? No, 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 hold I'm on. I'm putting that on film. Hold on. Let me I'm putting that on film. Put one Thank on. you for bringing that up. Well, man, in the great fight. But hold on, hold on. No, 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 I'm going all the way. No, hold on. Let me finish. Let me finish my point first. No, you can get back to that. Let me finish my point first. We're gonna get back. We're gonna go. No, we're going back to that. Definitely. We're gonna go to your point. My point is. All right, go ahead. You told me that night that you had some heavy shit on you, and you were telling me about you know what's going on with your 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 mom and all that. So my thing is. I agree with you when you explain what was going on with you. So my man, question you know is, what, my, hold on, my question is, when I ask you, what's your plan for you? What is your plan for you? Because you got a lot of shit on you, man. I just told you, dog. Hey. Don't you think I'm playing? You ain't tell you know, me nothing. I saw the goddamn building on third. Didn't I just tell them, ladies and gentlemen? I know y'all heard me. I'm gonna tell you again. But that's about barbering. I'm talking no, about hell. No, I'm, uh, no, no, no. Listen, listen. I said I seen a building down on 13 where I know I can put about 40 barbers in that motherfucker. But I don't know if I'm ready yet. But you know what, though? I think I am. Because that's what I need to do. Because I'm not a person to be, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm not a person to be under somebody. I'm a, I'm a leader. You understand what I'm saying? I lead. I don't feed. But hell. You know what that means. I, yeah, mm, mm, mm. But you know what, though? No, 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 no. Nah, you're... but I, mean, I know what you're saying, man. I'm trying to beat around the bush and shit. I'm fucking with you and shit. Well, stop beating I'm around the bush. I'm trying to keep it real, dog. I mean, well, you ain't keeping it real. Niggas, most niggas gonna bullshit around. You misdirected. I'm me. giving the film people something to say. Why don't he just say it? Why don't he just say it? What's that? Why are you gonna keep stopping shit, motherfucker? This Go is ahead, real. man. This is real. When it get real. This is how late shit. And you know what? How I'm gonna get my shit right? How you saying? How I'm gonna get me? I'm gonna get me because I'm gonna think about just me for a moment. All my life I've been thinking about everybody else. What can I do to make them happy? It's about me making me happy. Me going to the store and buy me some shit. You know what I mean? I've been buying everybody else's shit. You know what I'm saying? 
people, people out there that's gonna watch this film, they know me. What? The people that know James know me. And the people that know Hal Lang really know me. Now, everybody know Hal. Everybody know Hal. But people that know James and Hal Lang, that's, they know my personal shit. All right? I ain't trying to talk about myself and three different people. But hey, we, that's another story if you want to go to that shit. Definitely. No, no, no. <laughs> See, th this is my point. What's your point? Already, if you don't see that Halle, James, and Hale can't get it right together, which one of them is going to lead you to where you need to be? Halle? Halle going to get his shit laid. So what is he going to do? What he going to do? He going to be, he going to get his shit right where he's going to get his life right. He's going to step on his own path instead of stepping on everybody else's path, helping their path out, helping them go along on their path. So, it's so, time for Hale to walk on his own two feet. So in your, in your, in your mind, in the Hale mind, what do you have to do? What does that mean, walk on your own feet? What does that, that what do that, you have to do? What are the things? Fuck everybody else and do what I got to do. What do you have to do? What do you have to do? I got to get me, me. I got to worry about me. I got to, man, I got to dig deep inside me and, and decide what am I going to do? Am I going to keep this profession? Because this profession I'm in is the shit. Being a barber, y'all people out there, being a barber is the best job out there. You can own, man, you know what? I got more money than motherfucking, what's his name? Um, Hold up. Donald Trump. Like, ask me then, man. Like I said. Like I said, fuck Being a barber uh, is just one part of your life. That's one That's one coat. That's one I got, coat. I got, that's I got a coat. Like five, six you coats. got five, six coats. Right. But the most important one is the one that you got to wear when you take all those other coats off. The one that's going to be, the one that's there underneath everything. That's James Hale. My, that's my, the, my air, listen, my that's, that's the foundation because... You could be a barber, you could be whatever you want. And if you don't have hell right, right. it's gonna screw right. everything well, else up you're trying to do. Off, it's gonna because I'm, I'm gonna tell you what I'm looking for, man. What? Straight up. I told you when we sat out there and talked mm -hmm. that, man, I'm pulling for you. I told you when we sat out there and talked that if you ever got figured it out and start really doing it. I wouldn't have no problem with you coming back around the shop. I told you all of that. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But so, you know what, though? But hold on, hold on, hold on. But you know what, though? We, I, we, in that situation, we, two leaders, two leaders sometimes bump heads. Nah, that's bullshit. We didn't bump heads. Uh, we didn't bump heads. That wasn't where. That, that's not. That's not point. what happened around there. No, that ain't what happened. Now, now, anyways, we ain't got to get into what happened because we ain't even. Like I said, right now, I ain't even around here for that. That's the least important thing, right now. Right now, you wanna know what, what's on my mind? I wanna. I wanna know how are you gonna deal with all the stuff that's on you because. Just in a little brief time I've known you. you. It's a lot of shit. I'm going to tell you like this. I don't know if I can carry the stuff that you got to carry. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know if I could. I wasn't trying to go there, man. But that's what we yeah. spoke. That's what this is all about. I know. Because but I, wasn't, I wasn't trying to go there, but I think I'm going to have to go there then. All right. Yeah, I had a rough life, you know? I mean, a lot of people wouldn't think that when they meet me. You know what I mean? Because I adapted to smiling. Smiling mm -hmm. is a good thing. Learn that, people. But see, this is what I see here. Smiling is a good thing. Listen, this is what I see. I see a, I see a dude that do a lot of smiling, that do a lot of laughing, and that do a lot of positive, you know, talking about things. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But then, when I see the actions of this dude, I see a lot of... Uh, pain, 
I see a lot of I see a lot of pain. Listen, I see a lot of pain. I see a lot of decisions and things that you make sort of to avoid the reality, you know, of what you got to deal with. But what I'm trying to tell you is that's the stuff that you gotta run into that head on. Because if you don't deal with that. Man, look, I'm saying, you know, sitting beside my mom, watching her get shot go right next to me. I mean, so I, I, I mean, for a long time, man, I've been, I've been, I was, I was hating a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's affecting me now. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old and it's still affecting me. And that happened when I was three. So people can't say what a person's going to do in the course of their life. Because you really don't know. I mean, look at me. I'm, <laughs> man, I'm hurting, man. I mean, my dad ain't never been the fuck here. He ain't never did shit for me. Never did nothing. Not a goddamn thing. I've been taking care of my mom. Me and my brother and my sister, we, you know what I mean? We, my dad ain't been here and did shit. You know, and it hurts, man. I'm the oldest. You know, and, you know, without me, man, ain't nothing, nothing. I'm the engine. You know what I'm saying? You got your engine, then you got your tires, you got your, you know, you got all parts. But I'm the one, I'm the engine. Without me, it's hard, and, and it's affecting my skill. It was, it was affecting my skill. Okay, now I'm not letting it because I'm sat down and thought. But back to what I was talking about. My life has been so miserable, man. You know. Oh. And the lights. Oh. Oh, oh. 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 That was a long night. He had called me, Hale had called me at about 12 o'clock and I was on my way back from Philadelphia. And I wanted to get home, but he insisted that I stop by so that he can talk to me. I assumed that what he wanted to talk to me was, talk to me about was the shop. I think I was correct, but when I got there, he never quite, brought himself to asking me to come back that night because of previous conversations. He would say some things that you wouldn't be out of line if you thought he was lying. But if you just took it for granted that he was lying, you would also be out of line. You just didn't know what was the truth and what was not the truth. This, this is... Um this 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 is a tough this is a tough decision for me. Mm -hmm. Because really, I told him the boy he'd come start. Mm -hmm. I told him he'd come start money. And it's because the way the way things went down, mm -hmm. the way he did things, I mean the way that we had a couple conversations mm -hmm. about it, you know, prior to that. I mean you, you can't do that. You know what I told you why I told you to come on. Right. But I do it because of what you said. You yeah. said you tired. No, you, you said that you can understand why people judge you and say the things that they say about you. Mm -hmm. But what you said that was like key to me was when you said, I'm glad I you said you said it's your fault. It's mm -hmm. my fault that they judge me that way. Right. But I'll be glad when people stop judging me on what I did and start judging me on what I'm doing now. Exactly. And I still I still mean that. But I mean but, but seriously then you, you mean that. Yeah, I do. You know, I'm gonna ask you a serious question. I'm gonna ask you a real serious question. Mm -hmm. What are you doing now? How do you think you should be judged now? Based on what you're doing. How do you think I should be judged? Actually I don't think anyone should judge anyone. You know what I'm saying? We talking about we talking about you, mm -hmm. and we talking about what you do, what 
you were doing that? Well, actually, what I'm doing now, I'm not even doing half of what I used to do. You know, um, right now, man, it's, I'm just trying to get everything in the right perspective with myself, not for my family, not for my wife, not for, you know, Joe Blow. It's, it's, right now, it's about me. Because if I don't get me together, I can't help no one else. You right about that. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So, in, in saying that, when you're saying you're not doing half the stuff that you're doing, mm -hmm. do you think what's going on with you now is fair, is justified? I mean, what's going on with me and you, whether you're going to be in the shops you know, or whether you're not, do you think that's fair based on what you're doing now? Well, I, I think I made a couple of uh, um, misjudgments on on some points of what I didn't think it was bad, but you know, from the way things is going for me right now, the way I judge to make the decision, I made the wrong decision, you know. But like I'm saying, you know, people got to pay for their actions. Listen. I'm hearing everything you're saying, and I'm gonna take you like this. But I, my my interpretation of you as a person, mm -hmm. you got some good qualities. But just based on what you're saying to me now, mm -hmm. you see, you, you know how to say the right stuff. Well, what I'm saying is from my heart, though. Really. I ain't just saying. It. Yeah, but you, which what you're not doing is you sure. stopping short. No, you stopping short of being brutally honest. You stopping just short of being brutally honest. And when I see that, and when I see people doing that, mm -hmm. I know they ain't there yet. Right. They ain't there yet. And it makes me think, okay, the same thing is gonna happen again. Because you ain't opened up and really said what's really going on with you. Mm -hmm. Because, like I tell you, I hear a lot of stuff that's going on and I've asked you about some of the things. And you pretty much denied everything that I said. But I know, let me finish, but I know things People just don't create everything out of air. No, they don't, but people fabricate a lot of things. People exactly. Might, yeah, but some, see, I, I, I know what you've been hearing, but see. What have I been hearing? About me getting high and, 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 and you know, doing what I used to do. So, man, you telling me, you sitting right here in my face, and mm -hmm. you telling me that you're going to get high. No, I might smoke some weed. I'm not doing see, what man, I used to do. You ain't ready yet. Because you are, man. See, that's what I need from you. That's what I need from you. I mean, I'm telling you like this. That's what I need from you. I need. The, I mean, Your I'm. Is true. No, no, listen to me. I'm putting. I'm, I'm putting. This is my livelihood. Right. This is my life. You know, this is what's important. An opportunity to be involved with your livelihood. But see, but see, what I can't do is I can't let you tear up. Well, it's taking me so long just to hold above water. Because right. that's what I'm doing right now. Right. I'm holding this above water. Right. You know, I'm floating. I could be doing a lot better. Mm -hmm. The shop could be doing a lot better. That's what I want the shop to be doing a lot better. And you could be a part of that, mm -hmm. but you still, even now while we're sitting here, mm -hmm. you still ain't being brutally honest with me. Because see, I come from the see, I come from the same places you come from. Right. I did the same thing. Mm -hmm. And until you can sit down and be real honest about what you did, what you do, and what you're doing, mm -hmm. you stop it because you like, you, you, you giving me the, I puff weed, but I ain't inhaling. That's that story. <laughs> nah, but I'm, yeah, saying, I'm not gonna, see, you know how when people say, tell me who you hang with, I tell you who you are. I don't believe in that saying to a certain extent, you know what I mean? Just because if I'm around someone, I mean that's what I'm doing. Listen, you know what I mean? Listen, I've been in here in this neighborhood 20 years. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, the people I've dealt with, my mm -hmm. barbers, mm -hmm. when they go do something outside, mm -hmm. I get a call right then. Mm -hmm. I get a call right then mm -hmm. when it happens. I've had that call with you. Mm -hmm. Now, when we sat down and we had that conversation in there, I listened to what you said. Mm -hmm. Who 
I knew I was gonna be taking a chance with you. Because see, I know, I know what you do. And I say that because I know what I did when I was getting out. Mm -hmm. And I was doing this. I know exactly what I did. Mm -hmm. I got family members that did it. Mm -hmm. I've been living in it my whole life. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, so I don't have to actually see you do this and that. Mm -hmm. But no, man, you all over the place. I'm going to tell you, Saturday, mm -hmm. I knew that day was going to be bad when I saw you early in the morning, mm -hmm. walking in the opposite direction of the shop. I was already here. I was going you were here and you left. Yeah. You was here and you left. You did that a couple times then during that day. Mm -hmm. So I knew that was bad. Then I got a call. Okay. Hell just cop something from, from the board. I got a call. And I was somebody lied because I didn't even have no money on me to cop something Saturday. So I know that was bogus. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. See, I already know. When I made the decision to be here, I already know what was at stake. You understand what I'm saying? See, when it's funny how people be in your face and they, they act like they're your friend and they talk about this and they talk about that and then they go right behind your back and say something else. Okay, where I live at, before I came back, that was the hangout spot. You understand what I'm saying? Where you live at now? Yeah, where, no, where, where my mom lives. That was the hangout spot, okay? I put a crowbar in a lot of people's stuff because I don't allow them to do that no more. So now it's like I'm hated, you know, for clearing up from where they hang at. Man, people, I'm gonna tell you like this. Don't know why I hate you. The people that I, that I wanna, don't know why I hate you, man. No. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell you what people tell me. People tell me that's a good brother. If he can only get it together. That's what they tell me. That's a good brother if you can only get it together. You got customers that still come to you, that seen your ups and downs, mm -hmm. that know why you have an ups and downs, mm -hmm. and they still come to you because they pulling for you. You know what I mean? Like, I've had brother people question me about hiring. Mm -hmm. And I tell them why I hired you. And what they say to me is, you know what? Yeah, that's a good brother. If he ever gets it right, he held a bar. He a good dude. That's what they say. So these people don't hate you. You understand what I'm saying? You everybody got people out there that might not like you. Like this. But I haven't come across anybody that hates you. I've come across people that say stuff about you and stuff like that. But even those people that say stuff about you ain't saying stuff about you out of hatred. You know what I mean? Out of envy. What are they going to envy you for if they see you going through struggle? They looking at you like you're doing worse than them. So what are they going to envy that for? So it ain't envy and it ain't hatred. The people, with the people that I've come across. So you telling me that a lot of people hate you? In this well, I mean, that's the, that's, the, that's, the, um, that's the vibe I get when I'm around certain people. You know, before which we used to be kicking it and all that, but now when I'm around, it's like, you know, I get a vibe where it's not a comfortable vibe. So I distant myself. So now they, the reason why I say it, I think they hate me because now they, they, I don't know if they think that I think that I'm better than them because I'm not around. That's why I tell you, I don't hang with nobody that's in this neighborhood at all. I don't hang out in this neighborhood. If anything, I hang in front of my mom's house and that's it. But I don't allow all that hanging like they used to. You know what I mean? All right, but I'm gonna tell you that. Yeah. That's all right. That's 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 what you say, but I'm gonna tell you now. That don't convince me because what I'm basing things off of is not what you saying. It's based on my actions. On your actions, other people's actions. Because you had people, people come up here looking for you. Mm -hmm. People come up here looking for you, and they ain't coming up here looking for you for no haircut. It's by it's been three different occasions since you've been here, mm -hmm. that somebody came up here looking for you. All of this stuff, man, all of this stuff is just not happening out there. So, I mean, you tell me that what you're not doing. You tell me what you're not doing, what you don't do no more in this net. But that's not what I see. I see, I see some, I see some erratic behavior. I see behavior that 
that a person that's balanced and focused on doing productive things in their own life, don't do the stuff that I see you doing. They don't. So, it's, I'm, not, I'm not at a point with you now where I'm going to take your word. I told you, when we talk, I listen a lot of times. I listen and you see me smile and you see me now. Yeah, yeah. That don't mean I believe. Right. You understand what I'm saying? That don't mean I believe. But I'm going to tell you like this. Straight up. You can say what you want to say to me. Mm-hmm. But like, you said, like I said earlier, you can't turn around and look yourself in the mirror and say that same stuff and convince yourself that's true because you know what's going on. And you know what the truth is. And I know what I got to do. Well, if you know what you got to do, then you, you'll start living like you know what you got to do. And you're not doing that right now. I watch, I watch like a lot of moves you made since you're here. Mm-hmm. A lot of stuff just don't make sense. It just don't make sense. <laughs> I mean, you look at us. We about the same age. Mm-hmm. We. We ain't beginning in this, in this thing called life. No. For us, this would be, if this was a, a football game or a basketball game, we in this third quarter. Yeah. It's the third quarter. We we'll always look at it as summer, spring, and fall. Right now, we in spring. We ain't in no spring. Spring is the beginning of life. We ain't in summer spring. Is, then you got, you know, spring. Nah, where we at? Man, where we at right now, we in the third quarter. We, this is the time where, all right, first half, we done made all our mistakes. All our mistakes. Right. This is the beginning of the second half. Right. Second half go faster than the first half. Well, see, that's another thing. This is, that's what's bothering me, too, because I've always been worried. I never had a chance to really clarify my head on things because I've always been taking care of somebody else. Now it's like, you know, it's about me now, you know? I mean, like my, your mom, your family. Yeah, the whole, yeah, the whole family. I mean, I, I had that burden on me for years. Now it's time for me to get me, me. You know what I mean? I never had the chance to really sit back and say, okay, all right, hell, what you gonna do for you? you know? Yeah, but see, because you got, you, if you don't have you, you ain't got nobody that's else. That's what I'm saying. That's what, that's what I've been explaining for the last, well, Yesterday we had a nice little talk with my wife, you know what I mean? Because I want, you know, we're doing this refinancing thing with the house. But even if we do that, that'll have us clear for a while. But if I ain't got me, how am I going to be able to keep it that way? Yeah, so how you going to get you? That's exactly. That's no, I'm saying. asking you now. How am I going to get How are you going to get you? I mean, you tell me. So what do I need to do to get me? Yeah. Tell me what you need to do to get you first. Then I got another question for you after that. Well, first of all, I need what we're doing right now. See how many of you talking? A lot of people think that's because you're older and you've been doing with your profession for years. We still need somebody to sit down and talk to, you know? I never had a chance to do that because everybody that I was around was either, if I talked to them about it, it was going to this person, that person, this person. Should be able to sit down and talk with a person and that stays with that person. It doesn't go all out in the street or whatever, you know what I mean? Person never really get a chance to put their real true thoughts out there because you scared somebody else might say something about what you know what you feel. You know what I'm saying? And and now that I can sit back, I learned a lot in this profession. That's why I love this profession. Now that my mind is clearer than what it has been in a long time. Now it's time to sit back and say, okay, now I'm thinking, and you know what, hell, man? All these years you've been doing this, okay, your family is all right. You have a comfortable home and all that, but what else do you have to show for all these years you've been doing this? What else do you have? So, like I said, man, and that, that decision, like you said, that was a bad decision, but that decision, have impacts. Mm-hmm. Now the position that they put me in is I basically at that point because I hadn't caught up with you and because this was like the third time this happened, mm-hmm. 
I'm basically replaced. I got a guy, I told him he can come start Monday. I told him he can come start Monday at that station. Because, because of the battery and because of when I got back, we tried to, uh, you know, I tried, we tried, I tried to link up with you like three different times during that one day. And then the 9.30 at night, I sat over here till almost 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. I said, I want to go call you. Yeah. I want to see if you want to come. Yeah. I sat over here till 10.45. That was my fault. That was, that was my, my fault. Yeah, but see, you, you know, everything you do right. has an impact. Exactly. And it's a ripple effect. Now, at this point, what do you suggest I do? Like I said earlier, you know. So what I do know. I tell this dude now? Do I tell him never mind? I mean, yeah, I mean, I want my spot. <laughs> so I tell him never mind. Just tell him. Put see, him that, ain't what, that ain't what a man do to another man. No. And no. see, when I gave, I gave him, I gave, when I gave the person my word, Mm -hmm. I'm serious about my word. Right. So I can't go back and tell this man never mind. Right. So we got to do something. We got to do something. So I'm asking you, what do you suggest that I do? I mean, uh, is he a good boy? Well, I don't think he's good as you. I'm pretty sure he ain't good as you. Not yet. He don't wear any experiences yet. But see, here's the other thing. When I first told you, when I first hired you, I told you I don't want you to come here messing up my environment. Right. For the most part, you have it. But then again, you've done some things to disrupt it, to disturb it. So now, I gotta go back and I gotta talk to my barbers because I keep them informed mm -hmm. on what's going on. So as far as all of them go, um, the hell gone. So now they're confused because you've been here all day. And yeah, they came to me and said they, they was bad I was bad. Nah, and then this is what I'm getting to. I talked to them. I talked to them all first, mm -hmm. during the course of today. And I asked them how they feel about you and you coming back. And for the most part, everybody said the same thing. You want hell, hell do you got? I don't really have a problem with hell, personally. Mm -hmm. But hell do some dumb shit. And that ain't supposed to be coming from kids that's younger than you. Them kids to us. Mm -hmm. If anything, it's supposed to be reversed. Mm -hmm. They the ones supposed to be doing the dumb shit. I ain't got no objection if hell's come back and stay. This is what they're saying. But you know, Brandon is a particularly, he's sour on me. Yeah. And you gotta understand why he's sour on me. Because this ain't the first shop you and him worked at together. Mm -hmm. Now, don't get me wrong, Musk. Brandon ain't perfect. Mm -hmm. Brandon ain't perfect, but it's not like Brandon just picked you out and decided that I'm gonna be sour on this guy. Yeah, my actions made him sour, so now I gotta build it back up. I was, we was, we was getting, we was building something. And Joe, mm -hmm. you put a lot of pressure on Joe since you've been here. That's a whole other story. Nah, you, you, Joe is Joe, man, but you got to deal with people. And I'm me. And yeah, but you, you know, I don't know, you do some things that you don't have to do. <laughs> you do some things that you don't have to do. Joe ain't even got no problem with you coming back. Joe was the only one that didn't really, the only one that really didn't even know you was gone. Right. You know right. what I mean? He said that too. He didn't even really know, because, you know, Joe only come here a couple of days out of the week. Right. But um, we're going to do some things different.
Because I'm the one told Brandon to go pack the box up. Mm -hmm. I'm the one told him to do it. Mm -hmm. So I don't want you to think that that was him when he bought That was me. Mm -hmm. so don't nobody do nothing unless yeah, I, I know you tell me. You told me already that. So, I'm at this point. My choice was either, I'm gonna tell you what I'm think, what I was thinking, and what I was gonna do. I was gonna say, all right, hell, you gotta come back here with me, and you give me your key. You work when we work, you leave when we leave. That's what I was gonna do. But, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you this one more shot, man. Cause like I said, I'm pulling for you. Right. I'm gonna give you one more shot to do what you gotta do. Alright. Because all I need. Because I mean That's all I need. I see your clientele, I see people starting to come around, and it don't make no sense to me for you to sit here two months waiting for people to come. And then you slide out, make a bad decision, slide out, and you mess them up. Yeah. You mess that up. That's spinning the wheels. Right. And I don't want to hear it when I see you doing stuff like that. When I see any barber doing stuff like that. I don't want to hear it come rent that, yo, I'm short and this and that. I don't want to hear that because that's your fault. Exactly. That's your fault. Now, I'm going to give you the shot. Right. I'm going to give you the shot. That's man. all I need. That's all I need. I know what decisions I made wrong. Now it's all up to me. I appreciate that. All right. All right? Yep. Appreciate that. Thank you. That's all I need, not for us. Because I knew my head was spinning. Thank all right, you. Man. All right? Yep. He knows. He knows what to say. But I just don't know if he's there yet. But I'm gonna give him a shot. Cause someone had to give me a shot. This business hard. So.